Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for uh, being here so early in the morning. So my name is Zihan Jaffa, and I'm a postdoc at the Division of Fishes. And today, I'll be speaking to you about the phylogeny and evolution of the mudskippers. So the mudskippers are a really fascinating group of fishes. They, uh, some of these species emerge out of water onto land. And while they are on land, they forage, they um, uh, defend their territories, they maintain their burrows, as well as engage in uh, courtship displays. Mudskippers are found throughout the Indo-Pacific with one species in uh, Western Africa, and their distribution is coincident with that to mangroves. They live in mangrove forest, as well as uh, the adjacent mudflats and tidal rivers. There are about uh, 50 species of mudskippers in 10 genera, and they belong to a really large family of fishes known as the gobies. And here are just some examples of uh, representatives from this family. Edward Murdy was the first to uh, study the relationships between mudskippers in 1989. He used 39 morphological characters and he recovered a monophyletic mudskipper clade, here denoted by the black star. Uh, within this clade are two distinct groups. Uh, the first, the aquatic mudskippers, here denoted by the blue circle. And the second, the terrestrial mudskippers, denoted by the red circle. Um, Murdy hypothesized that uh, terrestriality only occurred once within the mudskippers, and he used several life history characters to resolve the uh, relationship between the terrestrial mudskippers, such as the ability to breathe air, to survive out of water, and being truly amphibious. So these two groups, uh, the Pyrophthalmus and the Glyphthalmus, they are considered to be some of the most terrestrial of uh, mudskippers. They spend uh, plenty of time on land. And for that reason, they have been historically grouped together. They are considered highly derived and they are sympatric. They share some behavior uh, similarities and they look similar, especially if you look at the size and shape and the fact that they have bulging eyes. Uh, just last year, Agareta et al. using uh, molecules um, came up with a uh, phylogeny of the gobies and here they show that the gobies are actually paraphyletic and that eel gobies are included within this group. They also, uh, based, based on their data, we see that uh, terrestriality is evolved in three distinct clades. So in light of these inconsistencies in literature, Lynn Parenti and I have set out to ask two questions. We wanted to know if mudskippers are monophyletic, and we wanted to also know how many times did terrestrialcy evolve within this group. So we examined 48 species of gobies, 25 of which are mudskippers. We omitted all life history characters and concentrated on 80 morphological characters. Uh, we recovered a monophyletic uh, mudskipper clade and uh, which comprise three distinct clades, one of which uh, is the aquatic mudskipper and two are terrestrial mudskippers. We identified several characters within these mudskippers uh, that are absent in all other gobies, such as the elongate anterior nares, which overhangs the upper jaw. We also found that mudskippers have thickened epidermis at the dorsal and ventral portions of the head. And despite uh, to have seemingly large and bulging eyes, the eyes of mudskippers are smaller than most other gobies, and they are also shifted anteriorly and dorsally, and this condition is not seen in any other gobies to this extent. Now, based on our data set, we have also observed that terrestriality evolved twice within the mudskippers in two distinct clades, and Pyrophthalmus and Bolophthalmus, the two most uh, terrestrial mudskippers, are actually not closely related. In fact, Bolyptalmus is more closely related to the aquatic mudskippers than they are to Pyrophthalmus. Now, looking at these two taxa, we can see that they're clearly different. They have differing jaw morphology, dentition, and diet. Pyrophthalmus, they have very small mouths, they are carnivorous, and they have caninoid teeth. Whereas Bolyptalmus have large mouths, they are diatom feeders, their teeth are usually flattened or bicuspid. So many of the characters that have been used previously 
uh, are really adaptations uh, to an amphibious lifestyle, which you know help group these terrestrial mudskippers together. So characters such as the thickening of rays in the caudal fin and the pectoral fin, as well as the arrangement of bones and muscles within the pectoral fins. Another one of these characters is, uh, is the fact that mudskippers have retractable eyes. And many of these uh, amphibious mudskippers have a dermal cup. And these dermal cups, uh, there's water in them. It holds water so that the mudskipper can moisten the eyes while they are up on the mud flats. So um, in summary, we have found that mudskippers uh, form a monophyletic group. And we have demonstrated this uh, with several characters found only in the mudskippers and uh, absent in all other gobies. Uh, we have also shown, based on our data set, that terrestriality evolved in two distinct clades within the mudskippers. And all these characters that have been used previously to unite the terrestrial mudskippers are really convergent traits, uh, which are adaptations to life on land. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, the question was, um, it could be that the ability to be out on land evolved uh, uh, more than uh, once or that it occurred twice. So I agree with you, it's just uh, two ways of, of looking at it. It's, it's both equally possible. It's two uh, equally possible scenarios. We're looking at it right now. Thank you. <laughs>